Take another deep breath in and let it go. One more of those together. Let's breathe in and let go. So good morning. Uh, If you don't know me, my name is Reverend Elisha Christopher. I'm the spiritual director here. Uh, I do use they and them pronouns. Uh, I have ancestors that come from all over the world, but what I know is that they immigrated to this country from Ireland, Scotland, Austria, and Holland. Um, And actually, uh, thanks for that song, Heather, because, uh, you know, biologists are telling us more and more and more that the one ancestor of all of us, plants and animals and humans, are the mushrooms. So, thanks for bringing a song about mycelium. Um, You know, and I'm going to start with that because, you know, tomorrow's Earth Day. Um, I mean, every day is Earth Day, but tomorrow's that special holiday we call Earth Day. Um, And, you know, I think it's just beautiful that what's emerging into our collective consciousness more and more and more is this awareness of the mycelial webs that live underneath the surface level of the forest. Right? That it is the mycelium, those little mushroom threads that live underground that connect every tree, that connect every plant, that connects everything underneath the ground. And what's amazing that we're learning more and more is that through that mycelial web, trees can share nutrients. That if one, sick in, if one tree in the forest is sick, the other trees can send their vital nutrients through the mycelial web to the other tree that through that underground invisible network, there's this ability to connect with and take care of each other. And what a beautiful idea to begin to emerge into our collective consciousness to also remind us that as we are a forest of humanity, a forest of community, that there is that invisible, beneath the surface, those threads of connection that hold us together that is love, that is God, that is that consciousness, that energy that we are all made of. And just how beautiful it is to remember that we can look to nature, we can look to the earth to teach us the truth about who we are. And as we step into Earth Day tomorrow in this month where we're celebrating this theme of giant gentleness, what greater teacher of giant gentleness is there than Mother Earth herself, right? How gently she holds us with her gravity. How gently she communicates to us whether we are in alignment or not with her. I'd say she's been whispering, gently nudging us and communicating with us for a few generations now saying, hey y'all, some things have got to change. That push seems to be getting louder, right? One of the things you may not know is that I, um, with uh, beyond this center, I serve on a number of committees in the global organization of Centers for Spiritual Living. Um, I serve on our Sacred Activism Task Force. I serve on our Strategic Planning Task Force, and I'm also on the Global Themes Committee for 2025. Uh, So I'm getting to participate a lot in the steering of the direction of this global movement that we are part of. And one thing I want you to know about is that tomorrow, our Sacred Activism Task Force is putting on 24 hours of prayer and meditation for the Earth. Um, And it's going to be available online. It'll be on my Facebook, the Center's Facebook. All the information was in our e-news last week. There's going to be 24 hours of hour-long meditations that are going to be offered all day tomorrow long, uh, all day tomorrow that will be then available continuously after that. Um, I'm going to be participating in a three-hour prayer thon that's happening tomorrow um, with ministers and practitioners from all over the world. We've got people from South Africa. We have people in uh, Mexico. We have people all over the place who are going to be praying in. We're going to be lifting up issues of our environment and the planet, and then we're going to be praying over the four elements as we move over these three hours. I'm going to be doing a prayer over the water Um, And I invite you, if you're able at any point tomorrow, to tune in to any of these things that are happening. And we're going to be pushing these on all of our social medias tomorrow. So look out for those. Because part of the giant gentleness, part of sacred activism, is this idea that we as a collective 
our collective consciousness, our collective choices, our collective attention has so much power. And for us to remember that each one of us are not just individuals and we're not just part of this one little community here in Santa Cruz, right? This Center for Spiritual Living is not just a CSL. This place has become a hub of overlapping communities, right? I'm so grateful that we get to share this space with you, Heather, and you, the Latis, and your music and what you bring to this space and to this community and to the world. And that we are also part of a global organization. We're part of a movement of thought. And there are, we're seeking to create more and more opportunities as a global organization for us to turn our attention together, for us all to take the power of our attention, the power of our collective thought, the power of our focus, and bring it all together. Because what I know from Lynn McTaggart and her books like The Power of Eight and Intention Experiment is that any time a group of people focus on the same thing at the same time, something more becomes available. She says the power of intention multiplies depending on how many people are thinking the same thought at the same time. So let's use the potency of this Earth Day as an opportunity to bring our collective focus around for the healing of the planet. Right? But that's also the healing of our own consciousness. It's the healing of our awareness. It's the healing of our choices. It's the healing of the way that we interact with the world and with, our, with each other. Right? We are at a crucial moment in planetary history. We are in an evolutionary moment. We are in the midst of a mass extinction. We are in the midst of a lot. What we do with it is ours. And so some, I want to read you something today uh, that is part of this sa uh, sacred activism day that we are doing. We also put on a, uh, our diversity, equity, inclusion, justice, and belonging committee, uh, put on a webinar yesterday that we'll be pushing again online, we'll be in our e-news again, uh, that from the, from the viewpoint of diversity, equity, inclusion, what do the issues of the environment mean? And how do we as individuals and communities take action? And some really powerful conversations happened in that webinar yesterday. And we'll be posting that as well. One of the other things we're doing as part of this is we are spiritually motivated social engagement committee. Um, we've got a lot, we're, we're in motion, right? We've got a, we're trying to get a lot done right now. Um, um, is, the, is the part of our organization that creates our official, the official the viewpoint or statements for the movement itself. And so our inclusion statement that we read, the unambiguous statement we read every Sunday, that was written by our spiritually motivated social engagement committee in the statement that they put out after the overturn of Roe v. Wade. And so we pulled a paragraph from that and we said, we're going to declare this week after week after week. So I want to read you today the statement that our Spiritually Motivated Social Engagement Committee just um, put out yesterday as part of this um, Earth Day push that we are doing. Um, and it's called The Earth Will Have Her Day. And so I want you just to listen, take this in if it's comfortable for you, maybe even close your eyes. As I just want you to hear this. Navigating the impact of environmental change changes in the face of unprecedented environmental changes, the Earth stands resilient, poised to reclaim balance and harmony. As human activities continue to alter the delicate equilibrium of our planet, the urgency with which we need to address these challenges has never been more critical. The Earth, in her timeless wisdom, will have her day a day where sustainability, conservation, and mindful stewardship take center stage. As we support the earth and her healing, we support our spiritual principles of the oneness of all life, the law of circulation and reciprocity, and the abundance of the universe. The signs of environmental change are startling. From rising global temperatures to extreme weather events to the, molting, the melting of polar ice caps, these changes are not merely environmental, they extend into social, economic, and political spheres, demanding a comprehensive and collaborative response. The Earth, a complex system of interconnected ecosystems, is sending out distress signals that can no longer be ignored. One of the most visible manifestations of environmental change is the warming of the 
of the planet. As greenhouse gas emissions heighten, the Earth's temperature is on the rise, leading to consequences such as more frequent and severe heat waves, altered precipitation patterns, and disruptions in ecosystems. Glaciers are retreating. Sea levels are rising. Coastal communities are facing unprecedented challenges. We've seen that here. It is a stark reminder that the Earth is a delicate web of interdependence where each component plays a crucial role. However, the Earth is resilient and has a remarkable ability to heal when given the chance. Efforts to mitigate environmental change through sustainable practices, renewable energy sources, and conservation initiatives can provide the necessary impetus for the planet to recover. As humanity shifts towards a more sustainable future, the Earth will gradually re regain her balance, and the scars of environmental degradation may begin to fade. The widespread adoption of solar, wind, and other clean energy sources offers a beacon of hope for a planet in distress. The transition to renewable energy not only reduces greenhouse emissions, but also fosters innovation, creates jobs, and creates energy independence. As the world increasingly embraces these technologies, the Earth inches closer to a brighter, more sustainable future. And we are all in this together. Individuals, communities, and nations must unite in a collective commitment to responsible consumption and lifestyle choices by understanding and respecting the intricate web of life humanity can contribute to the Earth's resilience and ensure the survival of countless species facing the threat of extinction. Education and awareness are paramount, as informed citizens are empowered to make environmentally conscious decisions that contribute to the Earth's healing process. It is a call to action that transcends borders, cultures, and ideologies reminding us that the future of the earth rests in our hands. And so we offer the following prayer in unity with our earth. Take a deep breath in. Every breath I draw is sustained by the oxygen produced by the lush forests. The, the rhythmic pulse of my heartbeat echoes the steady rhythm of the planet's cycles. Like a single cell within a vast organism, I am but a part of the Earth's intricate web of life, experiencing her joys and sorrows as my own. As I walk upon her soil, I am reminded that my actions reverberate through her ecosystems, shaping her destiny just as hers shapes mine. In understanding this unity, I, am inspired to cherish and protect the earth for her well-being is inseparable from my own. And I wanted to read that to you specifically again because this statement we are putting out into our movement. And I want you to hear these words. I want us all to be reminded that we are the earth life. I've heard it said that each one of us is the body of the earth walking around as a human for a little while. You came from the earth, you will return to the earth. We talk about oneness a lot. We talk about it as this feel-good idea, the universe is one thing, it's all God, this is great big idea. But do we, do we bring that all the way down to realize that oneness means not only are we one with the universe, that we are one with the life of the earth. There is only one, and it is the earth. It is the mother. Pachamama, Madre Tierra, Mother Earth, whatever you call her. She is the only one. And that our good is inextricably woven with her good. And the sickness in our bodies and in our minds and in our society is a direct result of humanity's relationship to our mother. When we heal that relationship, 
we will heal ourselves. I've heard it said that if you look at cultures across the planet and throughout history, how a planet, how a, how a culture views the earth will also be how a culture, how a culture treats and views the body of women. Think about that. Think about the world in which we live, the culture in which we live, the issues of our time. It is all a reflection of our relationship to Mother Earth. And so does our oneness go all the way down to those mycelial webs beneath our feet, realizing that we are part of a living ecosystem, each one of us a cell in a greater body, when I say there's only one of us here, it's not a metaphor. The very air we breathe, the very water moving through our blood, the very molecules that came from the soil that are in our bones and our flesh are eternal. Those atoms are continuously cycling from the body to our body back to the greater body. There is literally, actually, truly only one of us here. What would it look like for us to gently walk upon the earth as if we realized that we were actually the earth walking around? So take a deep breath, my friend, and let it go. Another deep breath in, and let it go. Earth my body, water my blood, air my breath, and fire my spirit. Earth my body, water my blood, air my breath, and Fire my spirit, one more time. Earth my body, water my blood, air my breath, and fire my spirit. And so as we just breathe in these words, I invite each one of us to just close our eyes for a moment, feel our feet on the ground, feel that life force that is breathing our bodies, feel the heartbeat. And imagine for a moment that each one of us is like a tree in the forest. And just feel the connections with those in this room, with those who you love, with your family, with your friends, with your community, with the food you eat, with the birds, with the flowers. I recognize that all of it is the life of the one. Not only the life of the earth, but the life of the infinite being of which the earth life is a part. So let us just drop ever, ever deeper into this awareness that our oneness is not just an idea, it is the deepest truth of who we are. Remembering that each one of us are the unique individualized way that that one life through the body of the earth is birthed into the world. We live as people for a while, and then we bring who we are and what we have learned back into that earth life, back into that one life. So let us use this Earth Day to bring our collective consciousness together for the healing of our planet, for the healing of ourselves, for the healing of our minds, for the healing of our bodies, for the healing of the community, for the healing of the biosphere, for the healing of all of it. So that we can then walk around the Earth with gratitude shining from our eyes for the abundance for the beauty for the overflow for the interconnection for the reciprocity for all of the beauty and magnificence that is this interconnected web of life that we are a part 
Let us give gratitude. Let us walk in gratitude. Let us walk gently on the earth, breathing gratitude with every breath. And then remembering continuously to surrender to that greater light and allow it to live us so that each one of us may be in right relationship with our mother. And so with that, I just let it be blessing it all. And so it is.